We are having a wonderful time here. We've just managed to come across the cubs of the Angama pride. Now, these are the three little teddy bears. I think that they are about ooh, six or seven weeks old, maybe eight weeks, but uh, I think they're younger than eight weeks. Uh, well, I've been saying that now, of course, for two weeks. So let's put them at around eight weeks old. But Jamie managed to find another three the other night, even smaller than this lot, and probably only about three or four weeks old. And they're somewhere in this Laga, which of course is a, another way of saying erosion gully, uh, somewhere around here as well. I don't know where exactly, but there is another lioness to the right-hand side of where the little cub is sitting. Uh, you might just see the top of her there, and I wonder if her little ones aren't somewhere close by as well. In fact, Ferg, if you go to the right, if you don't mind, there's a hole there in the bank. Zoom in there, yeah. No, that's not really a hole, is it? It's just more a sort of ditch. Anyway, let's go back to the cubs and see what they're up to. There they are. Just very nice. And when Jamie found them, I thought, I said to her, listen, are you sure they're not the same ones? Because I just couldn't believe that there would be so many cubs in a pride of four lionesses and Jamie very, oh, this is just magnificent. Jamie very cleverly pointed out, of course, that um, she had identified all the lionesses and these ones, their mother's got a scuffed ear on the left, I think. Left or right, her ears look pretty intact, but that might not necessarily be the mother. She's certainly long-suffering, whatever she is. There she goes. She's definitely lactating, so she is a mother. And as you say, this is enormously adorable. Watching tiny little cubs like this is a very special experience, always. Look at that, scratching their little elbow, her little elbow, which isn't so little, it's very powerful, of course. Look at that, that's wonderful. <laughs> and you can see now how perfectly coloured they are, how perfectly camouflaged, how their colour, I think, was designed for them to be in this environment. Of course they can be in an environment like the Kruger where it's a bit thicker, they've got lots more to hide behind and around and through, but here, they are just designed to move through this grass, which is exactly the same colour as they are. Yes, they... Sorry, let's, let's just have that again. I think I missed it. Oh. Exquisite bliss, you say they're big for eight weeks old. No, they're not. They're about the same size, and you know, in a month's time, you won't believe how much bigger they'll get. Their first little while, they grow quite slowly. And eight, eight weeks is about how old they are. Maybe very slightly younger, say maybe seven weeks, but I don't think so. I think they're about eight weeks old. This is very, very special. Ah, now John, you say, how vital is this play fighting? And will one of the cubs struggle more than one of, than the others? Um, John, it's absolutely crucial, as is play behavior in every single mammal species and a few uh, bird species, I believe, but largely in the mammals. It, it does a few things for them. It fixes the social order, although amongst these cubs, of course, there's very little dominance behavior. It's largely play behavior. 
in other animals like baboons or human beings, for example, play behavior most certainly does establish a dominance hierarchy. It'll do the same with hyenas. But with lions, of course, there isn't really a dominant hierarchy. Uh, it's very much all equal in the pride. The other very important role that it plays, of course, and it's why kids do it more than adults do it, as humans and in most other species, the reason is that they need to develop their muscles, they need their nervous systems to finalize all the different connections that have to be made. You know, it's, it's all a time for the brain to learn to tell the muscles what they have to do and for those muscles to then develop. And that's why this play behavior is so absolutely crucial. And it's also why adults don't engage in it. They don't need to. Their muscles are developed. Their nervous systems are completely as they should be. And so they don't worry too much about it. Mm, now, Jack, you say, well, lionesses take care of each other's cubs. Well, they do to a certain extent in that they will cross-suckle, they'll suckle each other's cubs. But they don't, it's not like they with elephants where a youngster will be adopted by a mother. But that said, in a pride of lions, if a lactating female was killed and there was another lioness with sufficient milk, they would absolutely survive. They're in, in fact, to the detriment of that lioness's cubs. So the more, do let's pretend, for example, well, here's an interesting example. We haven't seen the other tiny ones today, but let's pretend that this lioness died. She's the mother of these three, and they started to suckle on the milk from the other lioness that has the three cubs. Well, what you'd probably find is that they'd outcompete those little ones for their mother's milk, and you'd probably find that the ones to suffer would almost certainly be the younger cubs, even though their mother was the one that was lactating and supplying milk. Sorry, I was a little bit distracted by a vehicle driving at roughly the same speed as the blue flame. Right, we're going to have to leave here in two minutes because then we're going to have to rush up to the top of the hill. So let's just enjoy them for another two minutes and then we'll head across away. Very special. All right, we're going to hand you back to Tristan, who I believe is knocking about at uh, certainly one of the places I visited more often than I visited most places, and that, of course, is Treehouse Dam. <laughs>